Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. We're so happy that you are here. Happy Tuesday to you. Go ahead and take a second to turn to the folks around you to look them in the eye and to say, hey, it's good to see you. It is really good to see you. While you're getting settled, if at all possible, try to move to the middle of your rows just to make some room on the outside for folks who are still coming in. Move to the middle of your rows. It's good to see you. There's a good energy in the room today. I love this. I love this. This is exciting. So we've got a couple of announcements about some great things that are happening on our campus, some exciting things for you to be a part of. And of course, to help us, who other than your SGA president, Miss Liz McHale. Give her a welcome. Thank you. Good morning, guys. Okay, I too i'm a little bit tired on this tuesday morning so i'm going to require some audience participation uh first of all raise your hand if you sign up signed up for a breakout chapel yet okay that's a good amount of people if you haven't that is totally okay you have until sunday to do so uh, check your email or check the instructions up here on how to look at um, a list of those options and how to do it on the i attend app um, but those start next thursday so woo see y'all in breakouts um, another super exciting thing i also require raised hands who uses the sack pretty often who goes to the sack? A few people? I just see a few hands, but that's okay. Maybe we'll have more people because um, Campus Recreation and Wellness has just launched a new app. Um, if you go and search Campus Rec and Wellness in the App Store, you can download it, sign in with your Lipscomb username and password, and there's a whole bunch of features on there. If you forget your ID at home or in your dorm, you they have like a little barcode, a digital barcode on there that you can use to sign in. Um, if you are wondering, oh my gosh, how many people are at the gym right now? Maybe I want to go when there's not a ton of people. Then you can check on the app and see what the occupancy rate is. <laughs> if you're also interested in doing intramurals, you can see when those are happening too. That's all I got. Thanks, guys. Have a good morning. Thank you, Liz. I'm so excited that you're here this morning. We're going to continue in our new theme, Name Above All Names. Today we'll be exploring one of the many biblical names ascribed to Jesus. And as we do so, of course, the invitation is not just to learn about a different name for Jesus. It's not just to learn more about Jesus, but it's to know Jesus more. And today we'll be reminded by one of our dear friends from here on campus about the ways that Jesus serves as the Good Shepherd. And I'm so excited that today our speaker is Dr. Aaron Howard right here at Lipscomb. You've seen Dr. Howard. He directs our gospel choir in addition to serving as assistant professor of ethics and reconciliation in the College of Bible and Ministry. He has an appointment in the College of Entertainment and the Arts. We are incredibly grateful for Dr. Howard for his friendship and his partnership, his expertise. He is a brilliant and talented individual, but more than that, he is a humble man of God who loves the Lord, who loves creating spaces for people to encounter his presence. And today, he's going to do that through providing a word for us, a word that he believes God has put on his heart about the ways that Jesus serves as the good shepherd. We're excited for that. Before that happens, we're going to be led in worship this morning by a couple of your peers, Logan Bennett and Kayla Patterson. I'm going to invite them up on stage. They'll lead us in a couple of songs and worship here in just a second. Before we do that, just a couple of housekeeping things. I'm just going to be forward and blunt and clear with you, just because I want you to have all the expectations that we have of you in this space. I think it's really easy to, um, to use those devices that we have in our pockets or those devices we have in our laptops to disconnect and to avoid being present in the spaces that we're in. And you can do that lots of other times of the day. But I'm going to challenge you. Our encouragement is in this space. Turn those things off. 
Get off those devices. Try to lean in and be present right now. I've said this a few times. There there are very few times and moments in your life, and there will be increasingly fewer times and moments in your life where you can disconnect and be fully present and rest and be rejuvenated, whether you sing or you don't, whether you particularly like the, the message or you don't, even just the opportunity to be here, to be present. But what a great opportunity we also have to, to fully engage in worship together, to fully engage in learning about Jesus together. That's an incredible opportunity. And it's one that I would suspect in a few years, whenever you're away from Lipscomb, you're gonna look back and you're gonna miss this opportunity to have a, a rhythm with a big group of people to do this together. So I'll invite you to lean in, to, to pay attention, to participate, to engage, not just because we're trying to keep strict rules about you, but because we think that's how you are formed to not just know more about Jesus, but to know Jesus more and to look more and more like Jesus yourself, to be formed to look more and more like the person of Jesus. So I'll invite you to do that this morning, to turn off those devices, to lean in, to engage, and to worship. So will you stand with me this morning? Go ahead and stand up. And I'll pray for us as we get started and as Logan and Kayla lead us in a couple of songs. Let's pray together. God, we give thanks for the ways that you invite us into your story, for the ways that you remind us of who you are and the ways that you love us. And God, this morning, I pray that through this simple act of singing, through the simple act of listening and hearing, that you would do something in our hearts that we can't do ourselves that you would give us, empower us with joy and with peace and with courage and with the deep knowledge that you love us, that you see us, that you know us. Would your spirit remind us of that this morning as we sing and we do all of that in the name of Jesus, amen. Well, good morning, Lipscomb. We're so glad to be here. Um, so grateful to have an opportunity to worship. And just the scripture that was on my heart and on my mind, um, as we just humbly come before God, we also can boldly approach this throne of grace because of what Jesus did. Um, and so uh, I'm so excited that um, this morning, it's not about me and Kayla. Um, it's not even about you. It's about giving glory to God. Um, and so we're just, we're so, so excited about that. And I just want to encourage you, like maybe you have never truly experience the presence of God, and that's something that you desire. Um, and I just want to say that the Lord wants to meet with you. Um, you haven't gone too far. You haven't done too much. Um, the one who created your soul desires to be with you, and that's the truth. So I pray this morning that you would just draw near to that um, as we just draw near to his presence. So let's worship. Lord, I come and I confess I'm bowing here, I find my rest Without you, I fall apart Cause you're the one that guides my heart Lord, I need you, oh, I need And every hour I need you My one defense, my righteousness
Just to teach my song to rise to you When temptation comes my way And when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Cause Jesus you're my hope and stay When I cannot stand Cause when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you, and oh, I need you. It's every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Sing, Lord, I need you. And Lord, I need you. And oh, I need you. And every hour I need you. You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh God. How I need you, my one defense, my one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how we need you. Amen. And I love you, Lord I know your mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I tell him Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good And every breath that I am able Oh, I will see of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God Sing all my life Cause all my life You have been faithful And all my life You have been so So good With every breath That I am able Oh I will sing Of the goodness Of God your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. When my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. I'll sing it again. Cause your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. And all my life, and 
And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's pray together. Lord God, we sing of your goodness. We sing of your grace in our lives. We are so undeserving, but you give it freely. And so we thank you. We praise your name, Jesus, for what you did on the cross, for meeting us here this morning. Thank you for the chance we have to worship. We are so excited for heaven when we get to do this for eternity. Lord, and I just want to thank you for the goodness that you've shown each and every one of us in our life, God. We can just look back and see all the ways that you've been faithful and believe that you will be faithful in the future. Lord, we thank you for your promises, which are true and never fail. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just dwell in our hearts this morning. We love you. We praise you. We worship your name on high. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can sit down. Jesus' name of all names. Can we give the Lord a hand praise today? Is he worthy? So glad to be with you today in the gathering. You guys look amazing. Phenomenal worship. Thank God for that worship that's just really ushered us into the presence of God. Before I get started, I want to uh, just give myself a plug. Not myself, but we're doing a breakout chapel called Just Like Sunday. And if you have not signed up for a breakout yet, and you're still looking for one, please sign up for our breakout chapel. We're going to be having Sunday morning church on a Thursday morning. So we're going to be doing worship, a word. We're actually having communion every single week. I don't know if you know this, but um, some of the greatest moves of God happened where communion was the center of the gatherings of God's people. If you study the frontier revivals of the 1800s, they were actually anchored by communion. So something special happens where we're unified by taking the Lord's body and blood. So we'll be doing that every week. Dr. Schaefer, Brandy Schaefer's break, baking the bread for us so we won't have any styrofoam communion, amen. You know those little styrofoam wafers are like, no, we want the real bread. But anyway, all right. So, But today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the good shepherd, okay? I'm going to start off by reading our theme verse today. And the verse I'm reading from is John chapter 10, where it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the hiring, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. But Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep. I'm sorry, I forgot to keep advancing my slide. Okay. Amen. All right, if I was to poll you today, and I was to poll this audience and ask you, what images come to mind when you think of a shepherd? Most of us would probably think of a shepherd as compassionate and tender and caring, as loving, as patient, and as gentle. Most of us understand a shepherd as someone who embodies those traits that leads that person to care lovingly for another creature, or in this case, for the sheep. If you think of shepherds in this way, you are correct in your assumptions. When we think about the role of shepherds in ancient Israel, we discovered that the best shepherds had to display these qualities. 
Ancient Israel being a nomadic society and an agrarian society, their wealth was relying upon sheep. And sheep provided wool and they provided food and their skin was valuable. And so wealth often was predicated on how many sheep you had. And so that shepherd had to be diligent in caring for the sheep if the owner of that sheep, of those sheep, was to continue to proliferate. So what we see happening is David writes in Psalm 23, he says, you make me, the shepherd makes me to lie down in green pastures. The shepherd would have to go even in arid and dry climate. He would have and she would have to go and find land where the sheep could lie down and rest and eat and be filled and be nourished. David also says, you lead me beside the still waters. And I didn't know this, but sheep, if the waters, the currents were too turbulent or they were flowing too fast, they would get scared. And they wouldn't drink. So the shepherd has to lead them beside still waters so they will calmly drink. David also wrote that God leads him in the paths of righteousness. So a good shepherd lovingly leads the sheep in those paths that keep it safe from danger and allow it to thrive and flourish. But there's a line in Psalm 23 that had me confused. And it's this line right here. It says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, or you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. See, when I think about a shepherd as loving and caring and kind, I, it doesn't harmonize with me with this idea of the rod and the staff. Because the shepherd's rod is like a club, and the, the club would used to sometimes even have nails on the end of it. And they would use that rod and that club to beat off wild animals the staff was like a walking stick it was a six foot stick and they would walk with that and they would sometimes guide the sheep but they would also use that staff to protect the animals so as I thought about this I said Lord what is it what are you trying to say about the good shepherd well if we go back to our verse for today Jesus talks about it in verse 11 and 12 now just go back to that in verse 11 and 12 Jesus says I am the good shepherd the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, but a hireling who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And when he flees, the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. But Jesus says what? Jesus says, but I'm not like that. He says, I lay down my life for the sheep. I know in our contemporary churches, we don't talk about this anymore, but we don't talk about the devil, right? You can go a lot of, to a lot of churches and you don't hear any messages about Satan. But Satan is real. Satan is real. He's the enemy of our souls. I know it's not probably the message you want to say if you want people to feel good all the time. But I want to remind you today that we do have an enemy of our souls. In 1 Peter, Peter writes, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, that means we have an enemy, y'all. Your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Jesus in John 10, 10, the same chapter we're reading from, right before our verse said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come as the good shepherd that you have abundant life. So, so, so I, I understand what Jesus is saying now about the rod and the staff. I think I get what he's saying. See, Satan desires y'all to, to tear us down. If you're going through a trial today, if you're suffering with depression today, if you're suffering with anxiety today, if you're battling addiction today, if you're struggling with loneliness today, if you're struggling with temptation and sin today, and, and it seems like sin and temptation are trying to overcome you and take you out, Satan is just doing his job. He's simply doing what he's supposed to do. If he's giving you suicidal thoughts, he's doing what Satan, as the enemy of our souls, what's, it, what's in his nature to do. But Jesus says something about himself. He says, listen. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Because in laying down my life for you, when I got up out of the grave, I got up with all power in my hands. And so Jesus says, I have power over Satan. 
I have power over the grave. I have power over death. I have power over hell. And there is no weapon formed against you that can prosper. See, so Jesus says, listen, the one who is hired, the one, the one who doesn't care, you know, you just hire somebody to take care of the sheep. They see the wolf coming and they run away. Some people in your life, you thought they were going to be down for you for your whole life and they were going to walk with you through your trials, but sometimes they walk away from you when the going gets hard. Sometimes it's your own family. Sometimes it's your own mom, your own mother, or your own father who are not there for you in the time of your greatest tumult, the time of your greatest trial, and the time of your greatest need. But I thank God for the good shepherd. The good shepherd says, listen, when the wolf comes, I'm not running away. When the lion comes to destroy you, he says, I'm not running away. The good shepherd is a fierce warrior, and he will stand and defend you, the sheep. Oh, I get it now. When I go back to Psalm 23, I understand what he's saying now. I get it. David says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and staff, they come from me. What he's saying is that when I'm in the midst of my trial, when I'm in the midst of darkness and I don't know where to go and I don't know how to stand, Jesus, when you come alongside me with your rod and your staff against the enemy, I'm comforted because I know everything is going to be all right. I remember one night I was driving home by my house in Murrieta, California. It's a suburb in California, and it was dark at night. It was very dark right by where my house was. There were no street lights. And there was a car there. It was kind of a beat, you know, an older truck that was there. It seemed better days, but there was a woman in the truck, and I slowed down, and I stopped my car. Because whenever I see a woman by herself, stranded on the side of the road, I always stop to see what's going on. I stopped my car, and I got out, and I went up to the car, and the woman was there, and she had two little babies in the car with her, about two years old and maybe a toddler, and they just had diapers on and no shirts on. And I remember I walked up to her and she seemed a little sketchy, like she was on drugs or something like that. She had seen better days. And the situation, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit will just put something in your heart and you say, well, something's wrong with this situation. And so immediately I prayed. I said, Lord, please protect me. Just just like that. I just said, Lord, protect me. I walked up to the woman and she says, yes, my car is broken down. She says, "My, my boyfriend is coming back. But if you can take us to our house. We're right around the corner. We can get a gas can. And then we can come right back. And we can put gas in our car and we'll be okay. I was standing there not knowing what to do. Then the boyfriend of this woman came up and he said the same thing. Hey, you know, we literally live right around the corner. Not too far away. If you can take us home, we can get gas. And then we'll come right back. I was standing there not knowing what to do. I was like, I don't feel safe going home with them, but I see they're out here on the streets and they need help. And just as I was thinking, what should I do? I saw some blue lights begin to shine. Some blue lights were flashing and a policeman rolled up on us. Let me tell you, in that moment, I felt like I was comforted. I felt joy in my spirit. I said, everything is going to be all right now. The policeman got out and he, he walked up to me and said, hey, what's going on here? We got some reports that there was a man uh, behind this van, going in the van, going through someone's things, doing something he's not supposed to do. What's going on? And the man said, oh, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. The policeman put me to the side. He said, did you see him over there? I said, sir, I, I don't know if he was by in the van, but I saw him coming from that direction. The policeman looked at me and said, listen, I know them. They're no good. Something bad could have happened to you tonight. Get in your car and go home. I got it from here. Let me tell you, I had so much joy in my spirit that night. I got in my car. I went home praising the Lord because in that moment, the good shepherd from on high literally saved me from the wolf. God showed up in that moment to show me that he loves me. He showed me, he showed up in that moment to show me that he was protecting me from my enemy. Listen, when the law enforcement officer came up with the gun and with his badge and with the club and all that, I said, I am protected. I felt safe in the valley of the darkness where I was. I don't know where you are today in this room today. I don't know what you're facing, and I 
got to get out of here because my time is up. But I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what pain you've been struggling with. I don't know what situation you've been battling, maybe even in the night season. I don't care if you have insomnia. I don't know if you have night terrors, panic attacks. No matter what it is, I've come to announce to you that you can be comforted by the good shepherd. No matter what's going on, he is here to fight for you. He is here to stand against the enemy. You don't have to fight the battle by yourself. See, I couldn't fight the battle by myself. But when the policeman came up, he said, listen, I've got it from here. But I, I come to announce to somebody today that the good shepherd said, I'll take it from here. All you got to do is trust me. All you got to do is stay in your word. All you got to do is stay on your knees and say, God, I'm coming to you. I don't know where else to go. Like the song we heard, he said, Lord, I need you. Every hour I need you. That's all you've got to do. And the good shepherd said, I'll do the rest. So as I go to my seat, I think about this hymn. It's my favorite song, my favorite hymn, Savior like a shepherd lead us. I think of the song where it says, we are thine, do thou befriend us. Be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin. Look, defend us. Y'all see that? The shepherd is a defender. He's a warrior. Seek us when we go astray. See, some of y'all are like, well, that's old school. Brother Howard, we don't, really, we don't really listen to hymns like that anymore. Well, I'm glad you said that. Because I got an updated song some of y'all may know. There's another song. Another songwriter put it a different way. He said, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. What does it do? It chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 90. See, y'all didn't know he was talking about a shepherd right there, did you? Leaves the 99 sheep to come and get me. He, then he says these words. I love this part. He says, there's no shadow he won't light up. No mountain he won't climb up coming after me. There's no wall he won't kick down. Lie, he won't tear down, coming after me. As I close today, I don't know where you find yourself. I don't know the valley of the darkness of the shadow of death, death of your dreams, death of your joy, death of your hope, death of relationships. Boyfriends, girlfriends walk away. Family members walk away. Friends walk away. I don't know where you are today, but the good shepherd said, I died for you, and I'm coming after you. Last thing I want to say, some of you may even be mad at God. You're saying, Lord, if you really love me, why would you allow these things to happen? God's saying, I do love you. The enemy's doing his job, trying to tear you down, trying to undermine you, but I'm coming after you. Come back home. Rest in my peace, rest in my joy, and lo, I will be with you always, even until the ends of the earth. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is the promise of the Good Shepherd. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Oh, uh, we got to do one more round of applause for Dr. Howard this morning. Now, I'll tell, I'll tell you a secret that he wouldn't tell you because he doesn't make excuses, but would you believe that he is under the weather today? Can you imagine what he's like when he's fully healthy? Amazing. Such a gift to our community, such a gift for us this morning. We're so thankful for that word about the Good Shepherd. May you be encouraged and loved by that image of the Good Shepherd who sees you, who knows you, who cares about you, and will stand with you no matter what. We're so happy that you're here today. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Remember to get out your phones at I attended app, press scan me. We'll see you next week.